All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. So today's video, we're doing another gear review, and today I'm doing my Agilite K5 plate carrier. Now, I've been using this plate carrier for about, uh, I'd say maybe five months now, and I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of it. I use a bunch of different body armor in the past, and this is just, this is my personal favorite so far. Now, I'm gonna be going over a few things, mainly the functionality, the comforts, and the, uh, the practicality with this particular plate carrier. There's a bunch of different plate carrier systems out there or body armor systems, and uh, a lot of times they'll be used for different purposes. So I'll go over why I think this suits my purposes very well and uh, how it compares, again, to, to body armor I've used in the past that didn't necessarily align with what I was actually doing in that particular job field. And y'all might be wondering why I'm not just putting on a uniform, just because I don't feel like putting on a uniform. And personally, uh, I think this looks cooler. Just having like the Hawaiian style shirt with the body armor looks badass. Okay, again, so I'm going to be going over the comforts. That's a huge thing with the Agilite K5. And that's mainly due to the straps. You can see with the straps, they sort of create like a V with my shoulders. And that's very nice because a lot of other body armor systems will sort of just have the strap go right over, right past your neck. So a lot of times when you're doing anything, when you're moving around, it'll just chafe up your neck so much just because the straps are right here. But it's nice with this V shape. You know, it's not on my neck at all. I can do a bunch of different things and it pretty much never contacts my neck, which is nice. And it still rests on my shoulders pretty well. It's not too far on the sides. It's not going to go anywhere. It's perfect. It feels like it's resting very well on my body. Now, another awesome thing with this, obviously you can see the cummerbund. It's sort of like skeletonized, I guess is the right way to say it. But it's really nice because you have all these gaps and it, it makes it way more breathable. It makes it much nicer because you're not having all this material pressing down. And you don't really need that much material. So again, it makes it very light. And this body armor is very, very light. But in the back by the cummerbund where it feeds into the back, you have some elasticity. So even if it's not a perfect fit, if you didn't get it adjusted, adjusted perfectly, even when you Velcro everything in place, you still have a little bit of stretch as far as like breathing in and out and whatnot. So it's not really, you know, holding my, my chest in. I can breathe just fine. It's not really restrictive because it does have that elasticity. But again, it's very light and it's very comfortable and it's not too hot because you can see there's a lot of uh, gaps for the air and uh, overall body armor coverage is pretty good. You can get side plate carriers, which um, I have my own plate carriers and my own uh, carrier pouches. But uh, you can get that through Agilites if you really want to. I'm not a huge fan of rocking side plates unless I'm doing certain things. And generally, I, I won't really rock them. But as far as like the overall functionality, it functions very well. Again, it's very comfortable. There's a huge range of motion you can actually get with this. So I'll show you with the training pistol. You can see when I actually aim, I'm not getting restricted uh, as far as the strap being right over the pit of my armpits. Because a lot of times when the straps or the body armor itself goes really close to the armpits, it's very hard to get your rifle in place. It's very hard to do certain movements, especially with a pistol, because if you're doing the isosceles grip or the isosceles stance with a pistol, you're gonna be punching out and you don't wanna be fighting your body armor as far as actually getting to that position. So you can actually get your pistol up and out without fighting your body armor so much. And you can see when I do aim, my body armor isn't rising up at all, because a lot of times when the body armor isn't really adjusted properly and it's just resting on your upper back and not your lower back at all. When you aim, you'll see the body armor lift a bunch because it's just connected to your, your deltoids and your back. So when you lift your shoulders to aim, a lot of times you'll be pushing the armor up. But with this, it's not really, it's not really an issue because I do feel that connection with you know my lower back. And that's also super nice if you're doing pretty much anything because you know, it's supporting your back. You have almost like a back brace. When you have the, the hard body armor plates in, you almost have like a back brace. So you're not just having all this body armor pushing on your upper back and sort of ruining your lower back. And you can see even with like reloading, moving in and out of cover, I'm not getting restricted by my body armor because there's not a whole lot of material here. So if I need to reload, it's very easy. If I need to come in and out of cover or what have you, when I can just rotate at the hips, it makes it a lot easier because I'm not fighting my body armor to get into certain positions. You'll see with certain pieces of body armor or body armor setups, it's sort of like a turtle shell and you basically just have to like move everything. You have to like move like this. You can't just make like these, these upper body movements and have your body armor work with you. You sort of just have to move everything. 
So it's very nice to have that mobility. And again, I'll show you later on, but you can adjust the straps very, very easily. So for me, a lot of people would want this to be riding a little bit lower, but I rock a belt setup as well. So I like to keep it a little bit higher, but it's a very good height. It's not too long to where it's, you know, restricting my movement as far as moving side to side. And at the same time, it's not too short to where it's basically useless. So then moving into the practicality, you have to talk about how much Molly is actually, actually available on the body armor itself. Because back in the day when you're using the uh, interceptor body armor, at least when we were using that in the US military, there wasn't a whole lot of Molly webbing. So you couldn't really attach too much. It was in really awkward places and you just didn't have enough to really attach what you really needed. Especially now in today's modern military, you need to have a lot of equipment so you need to be able to attach it to your body armor a certain way. Now I rock a belt so it's a little bit easier and I have a little bit more you know, movement around my body armor. But when I have comm setups and everything, then it makes it a little bit harder. So it's nice to have that molly. So as far as the molly, you can see, I can fit a triple magazine pouch. These are STAC QEs and these are great because they're very streamlined. And again, it fits the width of the body armor perfectly. You can see you have an additional molly right here. There is no kangaroo pouch, which uh, I'm a big fan of, but you do have this upper pouch, which is sort of like the same thing. And I just keep some, some shears in here. So that's very nice, solid zipper. I'm not worried about that breaking whatsoever. So it's nice to have that, that extra little pouch and it's not going to get too annoying. So it'd be nice if you need to store a map in there or a protractor or what have you. So that's an awesome option. Now the Molly up here isn't very useful. Um, it is laser cut, which is nice. It's very precise and it can get your Molly straps um, fitting very tight. But I personally don't like to have a whole lot up here anyway. I think if you do have anything up here, it'll just be like a push to talk or what have you. So normally you wouldn't have too much up here, but even if you wanted to put something, there's not a whole lot of space because you only get about maybe one, one and a half complete rows of molly. Not a huge deal. Now, as far as the molly on the side, again, you can see it is skeletonized. So you can see the straps do sort of go in between each other. But I'll show you on this side, there's no issue as far as getting things on there. It's not a pain in the butt. These are some uh, Blue Force um, M4 pouches. So these are very nice because these are elastic, which is awesome to have on the side. So I'm not having that restriction again, especially when I don't have magazines in here. And they're very streamlined again. So that's very nice to have but there was no issue with getting these on as far as the molly itself. So you can see this is sort of like a double layer of molly. So you can sort of see right there, you can put things in between the straps itself. It's not just one layer of straps because that wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. It went, it's not just based off of putting it in between these holes and securing it like that. You do have a double layer of molly um, with this side cummerbund. So you can put the straps through the double layers and of course, talking about practicality, it's nice to have that Velcro in case you do need to need to attach, you know, whatever, like an IR flag or what have you, or a, a call sign tag or a cell tag. You do have some more Velcro in the back, which is nice. You have a, a pull strap, which is awesome. It's just Velcro, very durable, so I'm not worried about that. And you can also secure it so it's not getting snagged on anything. And again, you have plenty of Molly back here. In the back, you get a little bit more space just because it's it's not as close to the zipper and what have you. But then you get plenty of molly down here. You also get these clips. So if you want to attach like a pack or a hydration system, you can utilize that if it does have the right clips or you can just utilize the molly. Now I'll show you underneath, you have the cummerbund. So you can see you can adjust the cummerbund just by unvelcroing it and moving it in and out, which is really nice. Again, there's this the elasticity right here. So that's really nice. So if that's poking out a bit, you have that stretch with your cummerbund, which is awesome to have. And uh, again, a lot of people would have, you know, reservations as far as putting the, you know, the, the cummerbund system just made out of Velcro, but it works very well and it's super easy to adjust and it's very helpful. It doesn't move, it doesn't slip out. You can imagine when you have some solid Velcro and you close it, it's really not gonna be slipping out too much. Even if someone yanks this really hard, it's gonna be very hard to actually dislodge that cummerbund. So I'm not really worried about that whatsoever. And again, for adjusting these straps and basically adjusting the ride of the, the body armor itself, you just have to undo this top part. Then you have another Velcro. So it's all Velcro and a lot of people wouldn't like that, but 
And personally, I'm not a huge fan of Velcro, but when it's this easy to adjust your body armor, I'm all for it. It's not any annoying uh, system that you would have to use or take forever to actually adjust. So if you're using a bunch of different equipment and for some reason you want to move the body armor up or down, it's very easy to adjust the straps and you can even do it while you're wearing it or a buddy can actually do it while you're wearing it, which is an awesome option. So all you have to do is unvelcro this, unvelcro this, and then you can just pull this strap out and then you have the strap itself right here. And then you can just move this up or down just on the Velcro. So again, just like that, you have Velcro on the front and then Velcro right here. And again, you can see it's making that V shape. So super easy. Just throw that back on. I go about halfway, weave it through the top of this buckle. And then you just need to put everything back in place. So Velcro that in place and then Velcro this in place. And if you also really need to, you can use this as a handle itself. Even You can even use these as a handle if you really need to. So it's really nice, super modular. Practicality is amazing with this body armor. And again, here it is inside out. So you have the mesh, which is very nice. Again, it makes it a little more breathable. The pads are very comfortable. Um, you get a lot of you know, body armor where the, the straps are just miserable and it's super annoying to wear for an extended period of time because it just destroys your traps. But this is really nice, it sits really well, and the pads are awesome. You can see you have this mesh, you have like a cushioning, so it's very comfortable to wear even if you're not using soft armor or a trauma pad. So no issues with that whatsoever. And again, you can just see on the back, it's got the same thing. So very awesome. As far as practicality, this thing is amazing. Very durable, um, very easy to adjust, and you have enough molly. And again, I'll show you real quick how you can actually utilize this with a belt. It's very easy and it's very comfortable and it works really well. All right, so here we go. I have my Ronin belt. I don't have the inner belt on right now because I'm not actually wearing pants. So that's totally fine. It is what it is. So you can see I got my tourniquet. I got some more STAT QEs. I got my Blue Force trauma kits. I got my gloves. I got my holster. So this is a pretty standard belt setup. Not a whole lot going on. But you can see it still works out very well with the body armor. So just throw it on. I think the hardest part about using this body armor is sometimes just finding the cover buns and seeing if they're twisted or not. But okay, just throw it on. And then you can see I have enough clearance between my belt and my actual body armor. So if I need to reload, I can easily just grab my magazines. And again, I'm not really restricted. So I can move out of the way to make it a little bit easier to access those magazines. So I'm not just doing this and possibly, you know, snagging or what have you. I can just make those small movements. And again, you can see with my holster, if you guys have seen my other videos about me using my kit with my holster, there's no issue. So I can immediately just go draw, pull it up. There's no issue whatsoever as far as hitting the body armor. Uh, you know, if you have like a comm setup, it might be a little bit harder. But again, it's it's nice to have that the gap between your belt and your body armor. It's not too big of a gap, so I'm not really exposed too much. But it's nice to have that stand off so I can draw my pistol and actually get it into the fight. And again, you can see I'm not fighting my body armor, getting into certain positions. So it's very easy to actually manipulate my weapon if I need to get in and out of cover. Again, my belt isn't going to be pushing against my body armor, like preventing me from getting in certain situations or certain stances. So I can actually utilize my belt and my body armor and do all these movements without having them push against each other because I've had that issue in the past and it's not fun. But that's pretty much it. I mean, Agilites, they're very well known because they pretty much, they supply the Israeli Defense Forces with a bunch of their equipment. So they're very, um, they're very tried, they're tested, and a lot of people use them. The Israeli Defense Forces use them. And if Agilite's good enough for them, that's gonna be good enough for a lot of people, especially for people who are just using like the Agilites for like their backup setup or just for recreational use. It's gonna suit it very well and even more so. So it's a very uh, solid combat body armor system. Again, you, could, you can put those side plates on. If you want a little bit of coverage, you can get you know whatever pads you want and attach it. But personally, I like to do this because it allows me to move around. And mobility is a huge thing for me because again, sometimes 
you're just going to be put in a situation where you know you have to do some some weird stances you have to be in some weird nooks and crannies and it's nice when your body armor is working with you as opposed to working against you because you can actually work in those environments and not have to worry about your body armor getting in the way so it's very nice again i do love the agile k5 i've used a bunch of different body armors i've used the interceptor body armor i've used the uh, the Marine Corps plate carrier, which is actually pretty decent. I don't really have too much to hate on that for. And then I've used the Army IOTV, which is such a piece of crap. I've used two generations of the IOTV, and that thing is just absolute garbage, but I don't want to get into it. This is very nice, uh, a lot of mobility, uh, enough molly that you will actually be able to put your stuff on, and you can also utilize it with a belt, which is a huge plus for me. Some body armor systems, again, won't really allow that too much, so. I don't really have too much to say about it. As far as durability, I haven't had it too long and uh, I haven't really used it as much as I would have liked, but I've, been, I've used it enough to, to say that I'm very comfortable with um, you know rocking this in combat if I really need to. So that's basically it for the K5. Again, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to put that in the comment section. I'm more than willing to answer any questions you might have. And if you're on the fence, I would definitely recommend getting off that fence and going with the Agilite K5. A lot of people like to go with the Cry JPC, and that's a good piece of body armor, but I'm not a huge fan. I like these straps a little bit more, and I just think it's a little bit more comfortable than the Cry JPC, but that's just my opinion. Again, I'm here if you guys have any questions, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more gear reviews. I do have some stuff coming in the mail, but a lot of the stuff is getting lost, so we'll see when I can get those reviews up. Uh, and edit it for you guys. But yeah, again, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Consider liking and uh, hitting that bell so you're notified whenever I upload the next video. But that is it for this one. So I'll see you all in the next one.